So it's kind of like looking at the dashboard of your car and figuring out if you're driving at what speed and how many miles. What is customer churn and how can you reduce customer churn? Every kind of business has a different way of calculating and reducing their overall churn. For a SaaS, for a software as a service business, make sure that your product roadmap and resulting research and development, marketing, sales, and customer success investments all focus on solving your customers' biggest challenges and helping them get to their biggest goals. The jobs theory, commonly referred to as jobs to be done, was developed by the late Clayton Christensen of Harvard Business School and is an excellent framework for understanding the job that your SaaS product is hired to do. As a result, the competitive alternatives are summarily fired. Instrument your SaaS platform to measure leading indicators of customer churn. Once you know the actual job that your customers hire your software product to do, you can build in metrics and instrumentation within the platform so you can measure various degrees of utilization and goal attainment. So it's kind of like looking at the dashboard of your car and figuring out if you're driving at what speed and how many miles. Uh, this is an important part of figuring out how your customers are actually using your platform. SaaS companies scaling around product-led growth, or PLG, such as Slack, Zoom, Dropbox, and HubSpot, all have ways to know how customers utilize their software and when a customer crosses a certain product utilization threshold that for all intents and purposes guarantees that the customer is getting enough value to stick and nearly for all intents and purposes eliminates the risk of customer churn. This is super important in any kind of recurring revenue or subscription based business like software as a service. Once a SaaS company has adopted a focus around solving customer problems and they've prioritized the underlying true job to be done around that, and they've developed code within their platform, the gauges to be able to measure product utilization and progress towards goal attainment, you can then define what initial value, intended value, and extended value actually looks like from a customer success standpoint. You should also look to build a company culture around that solves for customer success and reduces customer churn. Silos, you know, that, that's not going to help you in this particular aspect. It's really important to get the entire, all your teams, all your company rallied around the goal of prioritizing the customer's goals. Product teams, customer success teams, and customer marketing teams really need to be focusing resources on driving good fit customers towards goal attainment that in the process minimizes churn. This also becomes super helpful in a growth flywheel scenario where you're looking for your customers to become delighted customers and then brand evangelists and promoters that help spread positive word of mouth with positive social proof, positive reviews that keep your flywheel spinning and accelerate your rate of growth. Conversely, if you mess this up and you have a high churn rate, you have the opposite scenario, so you don't, you don't wanna do that. Um, in inbound marketing, again, this intended state happens in the delight phase of the inbound methodology. The mindset around customer delight is the idea that your growth flywheel is spinning in a world where so much of the buyer's journey depends on these uh, reviews and social proof. The marketing and sales teams then can focus on making sure that they're attracting and engaging with the attract and the engage phase of the uh, inbound methodology with good fit customers that have the highest likelihood of being delighted because we've done the pattern matching and we've figured out not only how to get to product market fit, but how to get to uh, go to market fit. The focus here also helps inform strategy around your buyer personas, your buyer's journey mapping, your ideal client profiles, and overall basically how to fill the top, middle, and bottom of your demand generation funnel. Uh, what has your company done to be able to measure, get a better handle on customer churn, minimize customer churn, and maximize customer success? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, make sure that you take a moment to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell so you can be notified when new content just like this becomes available. I'm Joshua Feinberg from SP Home Run, and if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one assistance with helping to build a program, 
that minimizes your customer churn throughout your entire journey and flywheel, feel free to look me up on LinkedIn, send me a quick note about what kinds of help you're looking for, and I may be able to help your company address these issues. Um, thanks so much for stopping by today and watching this video, and I look forward to hearing your great success stories and how you've successfully conquered customer churn. Hey there, it's Joshua Feinberg from SP Home Run, and we are so glad that you stopped by to watch this video today. If you got good value from its content, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell so that you can be notified when new videos just like this become available. Hope you're having a great day, and we wish you great success.